Welcome to Translation Mysteries. In this video, I'll be using live footage from my Xenoblade Chronicles 3 stream. But first, I want to make one thing clear. Localization is an art, not a science. There is almost never a right answer, so these are just my opinions at the end of the day. With that out of the way, let's get into it. <laughs> That's a good translation of shikari steru. Uh, shikari is used for a lot of different um, situations, but in Japanese, when you say someone is shikari steru, it means that they have themselves together, right? So here they use our lieutenant has a good head on his shoulders, but you'll see shikari. A lot in like games and anime for situations where someone is like they get knocked out, boosh, and they're on the floor, and their friend comes over, shikari shiro, you know, hang in there, uh, pull it together, come on. Um, so this is a good translation of uh, shikari. That fits the bill is a good translation. E kanji, e kanji just means seems good. In Japanese, you use like a very common way of uh, talking about something or someone in an endearing way or in a way that shows that they have an affection for that thing. He said, Anoko, which literally means that kid or that child. And Anoko was translated as my sweet little mecha. So the English changed up what was said a little bit to get across the same feeling of having like an affection for for Mecca. He's a good guy. I don't know where that came from. It didn't sound like it was in the Japanese. <laughs> Uruboros Shokun. <laughs> Shokun is an honorific that I don't really see that often, but I guess let's look it up and see what the implications are. Gentleman. So an honorific that's meant to address someone as gentlemen and I guess gentle women and gentle people. So this is this is a hard thing, right? You don't put honorifics into your English uh, translations. You could if you know that your audience is only people who know stuff about Japanese culture and Japanese language. Otherwise, you probably want to take the honorifics out. Because if they wrote here, please to make your acquaintance, Ouroboros Shokun, uh, the readers would have no idea what that means, right? That being said, it's very difficult to get the same meaning across without putting on the honorific, right? So, it's possible that the reason he speaks like this, pleased to make your acquaintance, is because not only his speech, but also because he addresses other people as gentlemen or gentlewoman or gentle person. So we'll see how he speaks and see if it matches our understanding of the character from what he said in Japanese. <laughs> In Japanese here, he said he doesn't have any interest in us, which is a little different from stirring the pot, but okay. Okay, so this is something we've discussed a lot, but. In English, the characters do tend to be a lot more aggressive and confrontational in their word choice. So, in Japanese, all he said was, Teme, teme is like kind of an insult. So, something like, Listen here, or damn you, I've been listening to you spout nonsense, basically. But here they're saying, Snuff you arsehole. <laughs> Very aggressive. Snuff you, yeah. <laughs> They have two made-up ways of saying curses in this universe. One of them is spark, the other one is snuff. I think it's because it's related to the theme of fire. So each of the characters have a flame clock 
which determines how long they have to live or how much energy they have, something like that. So they use words related to fire to say their curse words, kind of like how there's heaven and hell, but you can say like, to hell with you. I guess it's something like that. So you no. You little upstart. Uh, konogaki just means you brat. Little upstart's a fun uh, translation, though. There it said, I'm worth something. Uh, in Japanese, it said, dekiru koto ga arute, which means there's something that I can do, or there's something that I'm capable of. That's a very generic line in Japanese. Uh, basically, if you can do it, just try. Or if you think you can do it, why don't you give it a shot? Um, but they gave it a little bit more flavor there. He's saying he won't hesitate, I guess, to... Like, move on from this life with the flame clock? Like, I want to do something to pay you back. あの小さなアルマが年を経ると隣のやつになる。考えてみれば、この世界の生き物、俺たち以外みんなそうだ。uh, in English, he says such a basic fact. In Japanese, he said daiji na koto, which means, uh, daiji means important. I can't say why they would go with basic instead of important, but saying basic in English does flow a little bit better. Someone's watching us in a movie theater? <laughs> So this guy's uh, speech in Japanese is very, uh, it sounds very fancy, very old. Not very old. Very old would be like samurai, gozaru. But it, a, a little bit old in terms of like uh, the era of the Japanese he's using. Uh, the translation is fine. There's a phrase in Japanese, hone ga oreru, which means for a bone to break, hone ga oreru. So if something's like a lot of work or takes a lot of effort, you say, it breaks bones, <laughs> which sounds very violent, but uh, it's not violent, I swear. Uh, that translation works. Literally in Japanese, she said, warukunai, like this isn't bad. But I think in Japanese, you hear that phrase a lot more often than you would in English uh, for a lot more context. So for the English here, they translated to I can get used to this, which feels a little bit more natural. You see warukunai used often in situations where someone is doing something new that they're not used to. So the translators probably took that um, nuance and translated as such. Is there something up with that tree? Uh, literally. But, uh, I think we can tell he's talking about the tree. Uh, th so the translation here does mean what was said in Japanese, but the interesting thing is that the verb that they use in Japanese is watasu, which means to uh, give or to like transfer. So literally in Japanese, is she wanted to give you that memory, um, but it's implied that you're sharing the memory. So in English, a little more natural to go with share, I think. So you know, arukarasa. So you no aru karasa. So you no aru means uh, stuff like that happens, which is a fairly common phrase in Japanese. That's all for now. There will be more videos coming soon, so if you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to discuss the translations live, be sure to drop a follow on Twitch at BrooklynB_JP.
We'll also be doing a translation stream of Yokai Watch 4 once I hit 200 followers, so all the more reason to hit that follow button on Twitch. Thanks for watching, and see you next time!